Debates Guide really, um, for me, pr provided a foundation um, for learning the evidence-based approach to the physical exam. The Bates Guide uh, was required um, at George Washington University School of Medicine, um, and I'm really glad it was. Um, it, for me, during the first and second years, it provided, um, you know, sort of critical information in a, in a very easy to access and easy to use way um, to sort of develop my evidence-based physical exam skills. Um, and then as I transitioned into the clinical years, the Bates Guide um, you know, was, was a constant sort of reference for me as I approached you know, patients on different services um, and you know, really learned how to apply um, sort of the concepts um, in that sort of patient-centered way. My school requires the Bates Guide and thank goodness it does because our first patient encounters are actually standardized patients, which sounds like it would actually be a lot less stressful, but that's not the case. A, a person is a person regardless, and even if you know it's a standardized patient, it still can be a really stressful experience. And my very first physical exam, uh, where I had to complete the entire adult physical exam from head to toe, I actually remember quite well. Uh, we had a special checklist that actually was pulled directly from Bates Guide, and we had to go in order of the event, uh, the sequence of events from head to toe, and um, my palms were sweaty. I was so nervous, and I'm not typically a nervous person. And had I not studied Bates, and had I not known what steps were were next, and I had I not known it cold, I think I would have frozen. Um, and my patient might have thought this medical student is completely incompetent. So Bates gave me so much confidence in that very first encounter that I had with my standardized patient, and I was able to pretty close to flawlessly do the entire physical exam. And they, they told me, wow, you really, really seem so prepared. And I'm like, yay, Bates. <laughs> so I have Bates to thank for that. Well, the Bates Guide is certainly the gold standard, or at least was for me during medical school. And I think, you know, what's great about the Bates Guide is that you have the very comprehensive, incredibly detailed, step-by-step -step sort of uh, comprehensive guide, as well as the, the pocket guide, um, which is much more accessible and easy to use during third and fourth year, um, as well as the online videos. Um, the, and they, they, online videos for us at George Washington were actually required as well. Um, and, and I really found it valuable to, to be able to watch sort of what I was in follow along while I was reading. During my first and second years of medical school, um, I found myself using it quite a bit for our um, practice of medicine course, which is sort of the longitudinal um, sort of how to practice medicine course at, G at George Washington. Um, and so during the, the physical exam sessions, I mean, always had the book sort of w by my side as we practice different physical maneuvers, as my classmates and I practice different physical maneuvers on each other, as well as once again, you know, when we were watching the videos online, it was a, a key resource. And then, you know, during our standardized patient exams through the first and second year, um, I think was when I sort of got the most use out of, out of the Bates Guide. Bates book is amazing. I laugh because I know it was required, but if it weren't required, I still would have purchased it. I had the online version, which helped me on my iPad and on my iPhone so that I didn't have to carry around like a really heavy book. But I also had the book so that I could at home, it's on my, um, I have a bookshelf of all my medical books, which by the way, I sold all of my first and second year medical books except for my Bates Guide. So I think that's a real testament to how um, incredible it's been in my life. And then in the third and fourth years, yes, you can use your iPhone or your iPad, but the pocket guide fits in your pocket so easily and in your white coat, just pull it out. No one thinks you're like looking on your phone and texting. It's really convenient. It still has all of the really relevant high yield information that I often get pimped on. Um, I love, my favorite part of Bates actually is the there's the, for first and second years, is the normal, what's normal physical exam findings. And then when you get into third and fourth year, I mean, typically if you're coming to the office, you're not necessarily having normal findings. It's usually the, the abnormal pathological ones. And so the red columns on the right-hand side of all of the, the, the pages in, in the guide, to me was so helpful because I was able to then say, these are pathological findings. This is what I should be looking for. If I hear this, this is what this means. And it really, really helped me. Like, really helped me my third year. And even actually this past, uh, I did a sub eye just recently in emergency medicine and my Bates, I was so happy that I had it around because somebody had asked about this one clinical exam finding about like, a, like the water jack hammer pulse in the arm and what that is a significant finding for. So, got me extra points, gold star.
So during our Introduction to Clinical Medicine course, um, the Bates Guide was really uh, a, a great resource to complement um, our um, you know, systems-based curriculum and, and lecture series.